Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group. It is April 17th, 2020. It is International Ford Mustang Day as well as National Cheese Ball Day. So if, if you have some cheese ball singer in the house, enjoy a cheese ball today, it's okay. Um, into the tech news, VMware's Carbon Black. Carbon Black is a security service that was acquired by VMware. Uh, put out their, um, their monitoring report for the month of March and they saw ransomware attacks jump 148% in the month of March alone. Um, and that matches the industry trends. It matches what you know I'm seeing. It matches what the other industry leaders, what the security community is witnessing as phishing and ransomware have just skyrocketed since the whole work from home. And the reason it's jumped up so much is your IT organization has all these safeguards in place, typically in the office. It starts with the firewall and it kind of goes down. But a lot of the security services that are typically in place aren't at the workstation level that can be easily adapted to at home or remote systems. So there is definitely work that has to get done. It starts with end user education. End user education is critical. Knowing what to click, knowing what to reply to, knowing, you know, just knowing those safe measures is absolutely critical. And you've heard me talk about that a lot over the last two weeks, and you're going to hear me talk a lot about it if you tune in every day. The, the next one, uh, PA-based Lincoln Financial Advisor. Uh, Lincoln Financial Advisors is Pennsylvania-based. They had a data breach reported on March 19th um, where a third party obtained a hard drive that contained client information. Uh, and not just client information, but their full names, home and or business addresses social security numbers, dates of birth, bank account information, driver's license, financial accounts. This is humongous that A, you have a hard drive that's not encrypted on a device that has this database of information. Um, B, it's just a huge lapse in overall security. For every client that I work with that you know does anything like this, A, we try to get it so there's nothing stored locally on the laptops. Using a virtual desktop infrastructure or remote desktop uh, system, you know, RDS or VDI. <coughs> or at the very least, if there's nothing we can do, we make sure it's encrypted. Uh, if you're not doing at least the basic things when you have a laptop get stolen out of someone's car, Anything potentially on that laptop, you have to report as a potential breach because an unencrypted hard drive can easily be read by someone logging in, even if they don't know the username and password for their computer. Uh, systems have gotten smart uh, by default encryptions on more and more systems that are coming out. Uh, but your IT team, you know, your IT vendor really needs to have a documented process. Uh, an acceptable use policy for laptops that includes encryption for these mobile devices. Um, and you have to have a data protection plan, you know, some sort of a data plan that outlines, you know, where your data is so you know what you have to protect and how you have to protect it. Uh, the fact that, you know, a third party obtained the hard drive for Lincoln Financial Advisors is absolutely a huge security uh, lapse, um, in my opinion. Um, Equifax settled with the state of Indiana for $19.5 million after its 2017 data breach. Uh, so kind of put that into consideration when you're thinking of all these data breaches that I talk about. Yesterday we talked a little bit about how GDPR is starting to get stricter and higher fines are going to be coming and more states are coming into the compliance you know, territory and creating their own legislation to kind of just outline what the penalties are going to be in each state. So the state of Indiana just settled with Equifax for $19.5 million for the data breach back in 2017. So it's expensive not to take the proactive measures to protect your data. It's expensive not to take the proactive measures with your systems. Uh, I think I could say that 10 times just to kind of hammer it home, but it starts with end user education, it goes into security services, it goes into dark web monitoring, it goes to making sure that you have the right tools for what data you have and who and how is using that data. So you want to have a conversation about it, let's have a conversation about it. Scott at techwisegroup.com or comment on 
anywhere that you see this video, as long as it's tied to you know my Facebook or LinkedIn, um, I'll be happy to have these conversations with you because it's time that we take security seriously. And if you don't, you're going to end up spending big money, you know, like Equifax just did on these settlements. Um, <coughs> moving on, the next thing I want to cover is this is an older story, but um, Senate Bill 327 out of California. Uh, so the California Legislative Information, Senate Bill 327. Um, the House bill version of it is, or the Assembly bill is 1906, if you want to kind of cross-reference. But what uh, Senate Bill 327 did, and it, it took effect January 1st, 2020. It was signed in 2018, so it kind of two years kind of to prepare. But this is based upon Internet of Things, um, and it starts with consumer-grade routers, uh, printers, etc. You probably have seen more and more devices recently. Uh, if you've bought an Internet of Thing uh, device, it has a random generated uh, password instead of the common admin, admin, Cisco, Cisco, things like that. Um, things that are publicly available online, you can search. This is my printer. This what's my default username and password. Um, but the Senate Bill 327 um, pretty much goes over Internet of Things. Um, and here I'll read uh, you know, from section one. A manufacturer of a connected device shall equip the device with reasonable security feature or features that are all of the following. Appropriate to the nature and function of the device. Appropriate to the information it may collect, contain, or transmit. Designated or designed to protect the device and any information contained therein for unauthorized access, destruction, use, modification, or disclosure. Subject to all requirements of subdivision A, if connected devices equipped with a means for authentication outside a local area network, it shall be deemed a reasonable security feature under subdivision A if either of the following requirements are met. And these are the two, I think, important things of this whole thing. Um, the a pre program the pre program password is unique to each device manufactured, and the device contains a security feature that requires a user to generate a new means of authentication before access is granted to the device for the first time. Internet of Things, I, these IoT devices, you know, they're everywhere. Um, they can control your curtains, they're your light bulbs, they're your, you know, Nest thermostat, they're smoke detectors. Now, they're they're throughout your house, um, and almost everybody has at least a handful of devices in their house that are IoT. Um, and what it comes down to is it's forcing the manufacturers to create unique passwords for each device they manufacture. So when you get a device, it's not a generic username and password. But furthermore, when you go in to set up the device for, for the first time use, you have to reset the password before it will even allow you to configure it. Uh, those are two humongous and great steps needed. Ideally, this should have been a legislation, you know, federally. Um, but California kind of is on the cutting edge on kind of just staying in on top of technology and expecting more out of technology vendors than the government is. Um, but this is an important legislation um, because IoT devices are under attack, uh, printers in particular. Um, printers as themselves, you know, IT departments in, you know, when was the last time you updated your firmware on your printer at home? Probably never. You probably got it, plugged it in, it worked, you moved on. Um, and it's the same thing with these IoT devices. And I talked about this a little bit um, last week when I talked about securing your home. Uh, a lot of times you open up the app um, and it will say, hey, there's a firmware upgrade available, but not always the case. So here it's at least taking the measure of forcing you to reset your username and password to kind of set up these IoT devices. So it is a good step forward. Um, so that's what I got today. Um, have yourself a great weekend. Enjoy some cheese balls today. Have a great day. Uh, if you need anything, you know, find me. Post a comment on one of the videos. Let me know you're watching. Um, or shoot me an email, scott at techwisegroup.com. Thank you. Have a great weekend.